an RD. Uh, right here we have a 04 Mitsubishi Evolution, obviously. Uh, 463 motor. Uh, the car was actually running good, but it was smoking quite a bit. Uh, so the valve seems like they're gone. We're going to replace the head and also add a Kigley HLA. Um, this is just a stock one. This is a stock head, obviously. And what we started doing was we actually started by taking the valve cover off, taking any kind of accessories off, the intake pipe, battery, your essentials. Uh, and then after uh, what we did, right now it's time to zero. You want to make sure this is top dead center. Um, once the way you do that is you actually get a, a wrench onto your crankshaft pulley, which is on the bottom. Uh, you use a 7 8 wrench. Way too dark. Yeah. And, uh, and then we loosened all the bolts with the exhaust manifold. Uh, when you do that, make sure you start uh, on the outside and work on your, work your way toward the middle. Don't, uh, don't do the, well, some people like to start inside it, either way. Same thing with the intake manifold. Intake manifold's a little trickier because there's more stuff. We actually, there's two bolts holding down the rail. Uh, you're gonna find there's some miscellaneous stuff like wires you're gonna have to disconnect uh, just so you can get to the bolts on the intake manifold. Once the intake manifold has been unbolted, you can actually go and start taking the accessories off. Um, you do, some people say you can just take the cam gear off. I honestly wouldn't just because the tensioner is always under high pressure. You got to put a rod through the tensioner pulley. Well, the tensioner spring, I should say. Well, we got the whole turbo out, as you can see. This bad boy is out. Um, that actually wasn't too bad. Uh, what I suggest is actually spraying PB Blaster like a week before you do the job. Every day just keep spraying PB Blaster on these things and it'll come right out. Same thing with the intake manifold bolts. Those usually don't really need to spray but we do it anyway. Um, any kind of bolt that you see you're going to have to take off and it's rusted, I would definitely do that a week before you're going to tackle the job. Now, um, when you take, in order, you're going to have to take the time bolt off if, depending if you're going to change your gears or stuff. We had to take the belt off. So what we ended up actually doing is we took the pulleys off, serpentine belt pulley, harmonic balancer, all that. Um, before you take your serpentine belt off, make sure you loosen the power steering pulley. Um, if you do that, you're gonna have a hard time taking that power steering pulley out. So that that serpentine belt will serve as a, it'll hold everything in place for you. Uh, next, if you can see back here, took the intake manifold off. Now, if you notice, you have two oversized studs on the outside, and then you have regular sized bolts on the inside. Those usually aren't too hard to take off. It's just kind of a pain to get to the bottom ones. Um, it's not really rust, it's just a pain to get the tool in there. Next thing that you can also see is also this support. This holds the intake manifold on um, from uh, kind of warping down. These two studs, uh, I mean, well, actually, there are bolts, but on this car, they were quite, quite rusted, actually. This one's not too bad. We're actually able to reach in this way. Um, this one was kind of a pain. We actually had to kind of lean into these, into these hoses to break this bolt loose. Once that's out, disconnect all the hoses, uh, hoses and wires. Make sure you remember what order they went in. Um, we disconnect all those. Uh, I, I like to not mess with these little plastic thing so I actually just take these uh, take the bolts off and keep them nice and safe to the side don't don't hit them they're actually really expensive especially this, this is your map sensor I think it's like hundred twenty dollars just to get a new one so be careful with that um, next thing is also you know things like this throttle cable just put everything to the side that way you can take the intake manifold off next if you notice is we're gonna actually take the head off once everything's nice and free uh, just before you do start yanking on anything, make sure you do have everything disconnected. Make sure there's no uh, bolts or sometimes brackets. Just make sure everything's off. It's just the head. After that, it's always good to have a friend to help you. So you actually have both sides coming off. Uh, depending if you, have, if you have bolts in, this will be a lot easier. This car actually has studs, so it's kind of hard. We're trying to keep the studs in, but it looks like we might have to take the studs out to remove the head. Okay.
Wow, so head gasket. All right, so as you can see, we got the new head on. Um, already came with oversized cams, uh, the adjustable cam gears. Uh, when you put these on, make sure the dowel pin is up, which it is on this one. It's kind of hard to see, but the dowel pin is always pointing up. That is where the top dead center is. Uh, we could also do, I mean, we had the privilege of comparing this head with our old head, and you can actually compare the lobes and that's how you know if it's top dead center. Um, next, obviously, we got to do a time belt, put the intake manifold on, exhaust manifold back on. But uh, just make sure everything is on there. Also, when you're dropping this in, make sure it's level. Talk about balance shaft. And uh, also make sure that the head gasket doesn't get pinched anywhere. Um, Next is, let's see, we did ARP head head studs, so we had studs that we had to watch out for. If you're just doing bolts, you could just put it on and put the bolts on. Uh, the pattern for this actually starts on the inside, and it's almost like a wheel. You start on the inside, work your way diagonally across here, there, and there. Never start on the outside. Uh, the torque specs, I don't know off the top of my head, but I do believe it's around 80 to 90, but... I'll definitely double check on that. Um, also, if you notice, we got ourselves a Kigley HLA. Um, highly recommend it, especially for track cars, just because our uh, 4G63 uh, floods the oil into the head when you uh, step on the gas. That'll definitely help it keep oil in the crank. And that's it. Uh, next, we'll cover the timing belt procedure and everything else. Alright, uh, we have the new head on. We put the head gasket on, obviously. Um, we actually put the intake manifold gasket and the intake manifold back on, or we're starting to. Uh, now, what I would suggest is, uh, as someone is doing the intake manifold, once this is bolt, uh, the head is on there, you have everything torqued down. Uh, so you can start doing the timing belt. Um, just be careful when you're doing the timing belt. I strongly suggest a timing belt tool, uh, if you notice on the actual timing belt tensioner, the tensioner you have to compress again really slowly. You actually put it on one of these, put it on the vise, um, and you pretty much do like a half turn on the vise, compressing the tensioner about every 30 seconds. Um, but now the, the tensioner itself, it's automatic. There's a bracket, and uh, in order to actually move the pulley, there's actually two dots. You get yourself something like this. Uh, some people make this. Some people are actually able to use, uh, I guess they make pliers that are something like this. I just bought mine from J Racing. Um, it's like 50 bucks, comes with a bunch of other stuff, but this is mainly the tool that you need. Um, after that, you time everything. You can put the valve cover back on, and there's little timing marks here, here, and there's timing marks on the actual timing gear. Make sure the dowel pin is up. I know like this is adjustable cam gears. It has two spots for the dowel pin. Make sure the dowel pin is pointing up. That's how you know if your cam's right or not. I'll take this off. Um, next point, I'm gonna show you guys where the timing marks are on the bottom. So, this, if you notice, we have a few timing marks first one is actually right here this one's down here everything this one's not timed yet but your first one is right here on your pulley the little white mark and then there's one on the block it's a little triangle these have to match up next one over here is back here it's kind of hard to see but there's actually a notch right in there um, let me see if I can point to it it's right there let's see if I can get a light there Right where that's going, there's going to be a notch. It's hard to see on camera, but in there, there's a notch, and there's a notch on the actual engine. Um, then next is down here, there's a belt, the balance shaft belt, and there's a notch on the side of the motor. Uh, right here, there's those also have to match up. Now, before you time everything, you want to put everything one tooth back. So this is one tooth back, this is going to be one tooth back, that's going to be kind of one tooth, it's kind of hard to do on that one, but one tooth back, and then we go to the top, 
This one's also going to be one tooth back. Uh, now, if you notice, this one's actually two teeth right now because this isn't timed correctly. But this is going to be just pretty much one tooth back. Once you turn the turn the timing belt, it'll actually fix itself. But uh, just make sure everything lines up at the end. Once you turn it three times, <clears throat> everything should time up. All the tension should be good to go. But like I said, definitely get yourself one of those time belt tools. Here's a better look at it. It's definitely uh, worth getting. It's it's stable. It's not uh, it's definitely not cheap, but uh, it's it's worth it from all the time belt jobs done that I've done. Uh, so next, what we're gonna do is finalize the intake manifold. We're actually gonna finalize putting the exhaust manifold on. Um, just uh, make sure everything is torqued. I know it's kind of hard uh, just for this build. We weren't able to torque spec the intake manifold on or we're not probably not going to be able to do it on the exhaust manifold on. But make sure everything's nice and snug and try to get to as close as possible as you can. Uh, for anybody that needs to know the head studs on this, um, you got to make sure you have the grease on there uh, and the order is usually in kind of like a diagonal order where you start out tightening the middle bolts and working your way outward. Once you have that, um, you torque everything down 30, torque 60, and then you go again one more time to I believe 85 to 90. Um, we usually, uh, obviously you gotta use a torque wrench for that. Um, try to use as little extensions as possible. I know it's really hard not to get an extension in there, but once we got that down, uh, should be good to go. Okay, so as you can see, we have uh, everything almost back together. We got the exhaust manifold back on, intake manifold back on, everything's on there. Uh, everything is timed. We did check everything. You turn it three times and it should be back to TDC, top dead center. Um, just want to make sure you, you know you put the engine mount back on before we drop everything. Uh, <coughs> one thing I do want to make sure you guys do is make sure that is bolted down. It's the little banjo bolt for the oil line. Uh, if you forget that, your turbo will go out pretty quickly. But uh, we still have a little bit to go. Um, just got to wire pretty much a few more things, put the intercooler piping in, put the radiator in. But as you can see, Definitely coming along. Just a few more things to do. Uh, after that, we got to fill up with oil, fill up with radiator fluid, and uh, check the exhaust bearings. No, I'm just kidding. There's no, there's no exhaust bearings. Don't look for those. And that's pretty much it. And then after that, uh, I'm gonna do a first startup. Hopefully, everything's okay. does this like it would you need to, to relearn. Go ahead, try it again.